Humans constantly come up with explanations that try to explain how the world around us works. Sometimes, as we learn more and more, these explanations become more complicated, clash with each other, and end up creating more questions. For many years, physicists such as Einstein have been searching for one theory of everything, an equation that is perhaps no more than a few lines long that would allow us to, in the words of Einstein, read the mind of God. Fast forward many decades, and physicists believe we're finally converging on a theory of everything. Superstring theory. Superstring theory is a complex and highly controversial idea that looks to combine numerous theories all into one universal theory of everything. To better understand what superstring theory is, we need to look at the fundamental forces of nature that superstring theory looks to combine. There are four fundamental forces of nature. These are gravity, the weak nuclear force, electromagnetism, and the strong nuclear force. These four forces fit into two categories that are theories which explain how the universe around us works. We have quantum field theory, which describes the universe on a very small scale, like how a proton and an electron are attracted to each other. And we have Einstein's theory of general relativity, which explains the universe on a larger scale, like how the Earth orbits around the Sun. Electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces fit under quantum field theory, while gravity is encompassed by general relativity. In the past, each time scientists discovered one of these forces, it altered the course of civilization, forever changing the world as we know it. Newton's discovery of the laws of motion and gravity helped push humanity into the age of machines, laying the groundwork for the Industrial Revolution. Faraday and Maxwell's work on electricity and magnetism paved the way for the invention of the radio, cars, generators and TVs. The discovery of the weak and strong nuclear forces resulted in the invention of the atomic bomb that was used in World War II. This is why if superstring theory does prove to be a theory of everything, we hope it can lead us into a new age of discovery helping us solve some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. While quantum field theory is great at explaining the interaction of small subatomic particles, and Einstein's theory of general relativity is great at explaining large forces like gravity, unfortunately these two theories don't complement one another. This becomes a problem when we find ourselves in a situation where these two competing theories need to be applied to one problem. For example, when we need to explain certain aspects of black holes, or when we look at the Big Bang Theory and the origin of the universe. We can compare this to a country whose states have completely different laws to each other. Which, in most cases, would be fine. Someone committing a crime in state A would be judged based on state A's laws, and someone committing a crime in state B would be judged based on state B's laws. But what would happen if someone committed crimes in both state A and state B? In such a case, having one set of laws across the country would solve this problem. In the same way, having one theory of everything in physics solves the issue of having problems that cross both the quantum world and general relativity. So what is superstring theory and how can it be proven to be a theory of everything? Superstring theory is the idea that small, vibrating strings are the smallest particles that make up the world around us. We know that everything is made of atoms which are made of electrons that orbit around the nucleus of protons and neutrons. These protons and neutrons are made of quarks, and this is currently where it stops, although superstring theory proposes that there are even smaller particles within, small vibrating strings. As these small strings vibrate, this vibration determines what particle is expressed. For example, vibration pattern A results in an electron, and vibration pattern B results in the expression of a proton. Amazingly, the mathematics showed that one of these vibration patterns, let's say vibration pattern C, had mathematical properties that exactly match those of a graviton, a theoretical particle that may carry the force of gravity. For the first time in history, quantum mechanics and general relativity were, at least in theory, playing by the same rules, bringing us one step closer to unifying both of these theories. The mathematical equations of superstring theory worked out perfectly, but there was one problem. The math only worked when we added an additional six dimensions to our reality, giving us ten dimensions in total. And this is where superstring theory becomes a little bit more confusing. The universe has four dimensions that we know of, three of space and one of time. The three dimensions of space can be looked at as up and down, backwards and forwards, and inwards and outwards. We also have one dimension of time, making that four dimensions in total. These are known as the infinite dimensions. 
superstring theory only works in a universe with an additional six dimensions, called compact dimensions. These compact dimensions all lie within our known three dimensions of space. The difference between infinite and compact dimensions is that when you travel along the compact dimensions, you always end up back where you started. Whereas with infinite dimensions, no matter how far you travel along that dimension, you will never end up back where you started. The best way to think of this is to imagine you're in a city, walking along. You can see a car moving ahead and the clouds gliding along above, all confined within the three dimensions of space. Above, you see a thin power line which, as far as you can tell, is one dimensional as it only has some length to it. You take out your binoculars and look at the power line, and all of a sudden you can see the power line more clearly. It has some length as well as some depth and width. You also see a small ant on the power line, so small that it can access all the dimensions of the power line. It can walk up and down as well as along the circumference of it. This analogy is great at helping us understand the different dimensions. The city is contained within the visible three dimensions around us, called the infinite dimensions that we as humans can access. And within these three dimensions are the compact dimensions that superstring theory proposes, like the power line. Something as small as an ant can access these extra compact dimensions. This is what superstring theory proposes, extra dimensions hidden within the dimensions we see every day. Many physicists still hold on to the hope that string theory may indeed be a theory of everything. The mathematics show that the notes produced by the string's vibrations precisely match those of known particles, like protons, and also match those of theoretical particles, like gravitons. It's an exciting idea because for the first time in history, general relativity and quantum mechanics are, at least in theory, playing by the same rules. Science has the incredible ability of being self-correcting. If, in the distant future, we still don't have experimental evidence for string theory, we can at least find comfort in knowing that it had a lasting impact on pure mathematics and cosmology, and that it changed the world of physics forever. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and if you liked the video, drop a like.